going to show you my 10 favorite watches in my collection and then we're going to get my wife's opinion on all of them. <laughs> Let's get into it. Yes, welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. So over the weeks and months, my wife's first impressions to watches that I have reviewed have become an integral part to the Mad Watch Collector Shows. She's not into watches, so to get a review of a watch from a non-watch person is quite interesting, very insightful, but also sometimes a killer to the heart. Because my wife doesn't pull any punches. But in the recent weeks, she's had some cracking reviews, like this one. No. Don't like it, looks cheap. The bezel looks cheap. The dial color makes the watch look cheap. Looks rubbish. And this one, not a lot to say. It looks like a car speedometer. Don't like the green, looks boring and very messy. That one was brutal. Super. So for you today, I've got my 10 favorite watches in my collection. And here they are. Take a good look at them. I've got mechanical watches, quartz watches, digital watches, price ranges from 5,000 pounds right down to 30. All watches are very iconic or they have a really good historical background. Ground. So, I'm going to show you each watch, tell you why I like it and why I bought it, and then I'll show you the wife's opinion of it. Also, at the end, I'll tell you what her favourite watch of the collection is and what her least favourite watch is. Are you ready to get destroyed by the wife? Let's go! Starting with the SPB 153 Willard. Now when this reinterpretation of the late 60s 6105 come out, I knew I had to have one. It was Seiko's first asymmetrical case shape, the cushion style with the crown just above the four o'clock. The whole watch is very reminiscent to the original. It's a tad smaller, which is great for my six and a half inch wrist. And that green color of the dial and bezel is definitely my favorite green on a watch. Those applied markers are superb, filled with Seiko Lumabrite. And I just love that pop of red on the lollipop seconds hand. I'm not gonna go too much into detail on price of these watches, but this watch costs around a thousand pounds. It's got a three hertz movement, a 6R35. I think it's a bit too expensive. I managed to get this watch a little bit cheaper thanks to H. Samuel, possibly my favorite Seiko right now. And I wear this watch a lot. It's currently on an Uncle Seiko bracelet. I absolutely love it, but it's just awesome. So here's my wife's thoughts on the SPB 153. I like it. It looks like a watch that has been squished. You know what I mean? Squashed. But I like it. The colors are good and it's quite military looking. So thumbs up. Okay, so not a bad start there. She loves the watch, just looks squished. Let's move on. The Squale 1521 Blue Ocean 50 Atmos. There aren't many watches that I own that when I look down at my wrist on it, I just smile. I think of sunshine. I think of clear blue Caribbean sea. And if ever I'm feeling down or it's dingy dark gray weather outside, I will always have my 1521 on. Squale have a great history of first making cases for other watches brands for divers, such as the likes of Blancpain. That was the 1950s. And in the late 60s, Squale decided to make their own divers. It's got a Salita SW200 inside, but just look at the dial. Is that something special or is that something special? 500 meters water resistant, not the thinnest of watches, but because of the case shape, it doesn't look big at all on wrist. I've got this on a Squale shark mesh bracelet. And if you're on the fence with buying a Squale, my advice is to get one. So the wife's thoughts on the Squale 1521. At first, I thought this was tacky, but I've grown to love it. And when I look at the blue now, it makes me smile. Not my favorite watch, but it has definitely grown on me over time. Well, that was pretty good again, wasn't it? Can we continue this positivity? Only time will tell. I must say that the wife your watch out. Well, I've got a very special watch on today. It was given to me on my birthday by a very special friend who had this watch when he was around five. This is one of those original Transformer watches. I didn't have one of these as a kid and it will be treasured and looked after for another 35 years. What a retro transforming stunner. 
third watch in and it is my stunning over engineered Zinu 50. Yes this again is a 500 meter water resistant capable diver. Zin is a fantastic German brand that basically overdoes on everything i.e if something needs testing on a watch they'll test it 17 times. When the U50 came out I knew I wanted it. 41 millimeter case but the watch does look smaller on my wrist. It's 11 millimeter thick that's incredible German U-boat stainless steel that has been tegumented which is Zin's proprietary hardening coating. Scratch proof. Salita SW300-1 inside. This is the most modern design that I have in the 10 but as the weeks have gone by I find myself wearing this more and more. I've still got it on the Artem sailcloth strap as I think it's a perfect partner and if you haven't looked at Zin watches yet do it. Okay the wise views on the Zin U50. <laughs> yeah it's that Lego watch isn't it? The hands look like bloodied syringes. When I looked at this watch first, I thought it was made for a child. You've told me that it's been made from submarine steel, and I do have an appreciation for that and respect, but it still looks like a 13-year-old's watch. Oh, well that's a bit harsh, isn't it? This next watch gives me so many great memories of my childhood growing up. We are obviously talking about the Casio CA53W. It's funny, it really really weird sort of feelings when I look at the watch because you know it makes me appreciate what an amazing childhood I had what a great family I have honestly sort of wells me up a little bit but this was the height of technology back in 1988 89 but the CA53W just embodies how I feel about Casio they're retro now and they're fashionable again this watch was on the wrist of Marty McFly in Back to the Future 2 and I have to say it's my favorite Casio I have and now the wise fuse <laughs> yes I know that this is retro and it was the watch in your favorite film of all time I know that but to me it still looks like a kid's watch Oh, that was a bad one, wasn't it? Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. The GW-M5610. G-Shock first came out in 1983, and this is the watch that looks the most truest to that original square. Now, the GW-M means that this puppy is solar powered and it has multi-band six. So it picks up an atomic clock wave and pings it to a watch at about three in the morning to give you accurate time. So this is the watch I set all my other watches to. This is my apocalypse watch when the world is crumbling this is the one that I'd want to be by my side and on my wrist and I couldn't imagine my watch collection without it here's the wise thoughts no 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 too big too ugly do not like it next Ugh, not been good for the digital watches has it think we need to race on to one I know she's gonna like the black bay 58 Still to this day my favourite diver I've ever had on my wrist, I've reviewed or had in the hands. Yes for my size wrists and for what I'm looking for in a vintage inspired dive watch this ticks absolutely every single box. I love the history of Tudor and the Black Bay 58 does an amazing job of recognizing all those historic references in the past. I'm a two year owner of this watch now and it has been everywhere with me. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna find a watch that can top it for me. The wife's gotta love this one, hasn't she? Here we go. Yes, I bought this for you, didn't I? For a blingy watch, it's still understated and that's why I like it. It looks old, but it's not. Yes, I still like this one. Okay, so yeah, she does like it. Possibly a little bit too blingy for her. She's not a gold lover at all. But this is more positive, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I'm not a massive lover of big watches. I tend to keep away from anything above 42 millimeters. But every now and then, there's a watch that comes along that I just gotta have. And when the SNJ025 was released, I had to have it. Because this is the reimagination of the H558, the watch Arnold Schwarzenegger wore 
war in Predator Commando, and it was actually his personal watch. It was a huge feat for Seiko, as it was the first any digi diver with an alarm, but it's another outlandish and out there case shape, daring to do things that no one else does. It's that tuna style case, and even though it does look rather huge on my wrist, this one is now solar powered, all the crowns are screw in, and it is a fantastic bit of kit. The silicon rubber strap is awesome. Huge Seiko fan, huge Arnie fan. Here's our thoughts. <laughs> Now I know that this is an Arnold Schwarzenegger watch and that's why I like it, but oh, it looks like a giant stopwatch and the straps just doesn't look like it fits. It's ugly. Ooh, that's a tough one to take, but fair dues. The Rolex 214-270 Explorer 39mm Mark II. When I close my eyes and think of a watch, this is the one that comes to my brain. A simple three-hander, but done to perfection. Now the Explorer has had a lot of facelifts from when the first reference came out in the 50s. However, you can see the engineering and the design. Rolex have carefully improved and upgraded this watch. Like my Black Bay 58, this watch is COSC certified and I really appreciate the refined movement. For me this is the best Rolex because it is fantastic without telling you it is. I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd ever own a Rolex. Owning one it hasn't changed me or my life but it does make me respect even more the work that goes into making these things. Here's her thoughts on the Explorer. Yeah this is edging on the side of blingy and a little bit of an old man's watch. Mm. Yeah, so not a favourite, possibly a bit too blingy for her. Hello. This is a hard thing to say, but I think the next watch, for me, is my perfect watch. And it's not a diver. From the brand, brand history, the materials, the design, it's all there. And I am talking about the Vertex M100. Vertex is a company that was first established in the 1920s and actually opened up on the same day, on the same road as Rolex. After being established for 20 years, Vertex were one of the 12 brands picked to supply military field watches to the British Armed Forces. One of the dirty dozen in the 70s Vertex went kaputski, but Don, great great grandson of the founder, relaunched Vertex and came out with a watch that's a perfect mix between vintage inspired and modern watchmaking. From the case size, the beautiful hand wind movement, to the superb Dial. You can see that amazing amalgamation of modern technology. The markers are not just loomed, they are blocks of loom. And that broad arrow just below the Vertex logo tells you that this is a watch steeped in British military history. And yeah, you know what? I've said it. I have said it. This is my favourite watch. Here's my wife's thoughts on the Vertex M100. Yes, love this. Very understated, very classy, looks military. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I knew she'd like this one. And lastly, but definitely not least, the CWC reissue of the 1980 Royal Navy Diver. The Cabot Watch Company have been making watches predominantly for the armed forces since the 70s. Now the diver that I have here is a replica given to the Royal Navy that superseded the Rolex Submariner. Still with all the MOD specs, including fixed spring bars, so it's only one piece or NATO straps that are gonna work on this watch. But this this thing gives me absolutely everything I'm looking for in a timepiece. From the brand to the brand history. And it also gives me immense pride. I was actually given this watch to review, but when I opened it for the first time, it was honestly like love at first sight. It's a strapaholic and it can go with any color you want. A bezel action to die for. And it's right up there with one of my favorites. The CWC RN Diver, here we go. Yep, really like this. Again, military, understated. It's a win for me. Again, this is military. I knew she'd like this bad boy. 
So there is my 10 favorite watches in my collection. I'm not very complicated. I don't like big complicated dials or complications in a watch really. Watches are there to do a job for me and to be by your side when you need them, which is kind of the reason why I really love military watches because they are there to do a job. Less complicated, the better. And my wife is pretty much the same. Her favorite watch is the Vertex, just a beautifully refined field watch. Can you guess what her least favorite watch is? Yeah, she doesn't like G-Shocks. Hmm, she's not a fan. In fact, not really a fan of digital watches at all. But like I said at the start, she's not really into watches. And I just want to give her a big thank you for putting up with me. Thank you so much for watching till the end of this. Click this button and become a certified MWC member. And if you're new to this channel, why don't you look at this show? This is an absolute stunner of a show. Go on, click this one. Click it. Click the show. Come on. Come on, I haven't got all day. Come on. Click it. Click it. Click it.